Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear us OK? Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. If you can hear us, please let us know in the chat window. I don't want to talk and uh, and no one can hear us. Um, we're going to get started in just a minute. Um, this is part two of uh, Microsoft Make Code Arcade session. Um, this is a code along session where we're going to be using Make Code Arcade to create a really fun uh, 2D sprite based game using JavaScript this time. OK, great. Looks like people can hear us. Um, but before we get started, um, I do need to just do a quick housekeeping. Um, this is the Microsoft Digital Code of Conduct um, I need to show you. So lots of stuff in here, but um, but really we just want you to when you interact with us through the chat window, make sure you're respectful to others, uh, inclusive. Um, but but please do ask us questions and share your experiences. We love uh, interacting with you all. All right, um, so without any further ado, oh, let's uh, maybe introduce ourselves. So if you weren't in the last session, um, my name is Jacqueline Russell. I'm a program manager on the Make Code team, and you can find me on Twitter at Jackster. I'm Pelly. Um, I'm on the left here, and I'm an engineer also in Make Code, working uh, working with Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. And I'm Joey, also an engineer, also at Makeup. Oh, forgot the slide with the. We forgot the slide with the the website. It's in the other slide deck. All right, let's go oh, to okay. the. Let's go to the website then. Yeah. So, um, if you guys want to all code along with us, there is no tutorial for this one, um, but open up a web browser and um, if you go to arcade.makecode.com. You'll get to our home page. Uh, this is what it looks like. On the home page, there are tutorials and uh, game samples and things like that. We're actually, for this session, we're not going to be following a tutorial per se, mm -hmm. but Pelly and Joey will be taking you through a version of Flappy Duck, right? Mm -hmm. Falling Duck, yeah. So that, there, Duck. there is a version of that on the home screen uh, under Blocks Games if you want to try that one out on your own. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be making it in JavaScript and we're going to make our own variant on it. So won't be the same thing. Let's get going. Um, and then before we get started, really quick question. Um, someone was asking where we can get these awesome t-shirts that we have. So I don't know if people have seen, but Pelly and I are wearing our arcade uh, t-shirts. Mm -hmm. These are just t-shirts of the sprites in arcade. I think it's blurring your it, okay. uh, I'll have to... Yeah, I think I have this little website on Glitch. Oh, there and you go. Copy paste your code in there and then it'll generate the image, but also uh, laser cuttable stencils and then you can paint that on uh, different parts of your, uh, you know, uh, that's what we use to decorate our, our big arcade cabinets at the office. Mm -hmm. um, and then what was the link for the, I'll paste it into the chat window yeah. when I find it. Um, let me go ahead and do that. Yeah. All right. It's a little side project that I needed yeah. for uh, yes. for doing the t-shirts. <laughs> All right. Uh, shall we go, Joey? Yeah. yeah. Let's create Perfect. a new project. So you need a name for it. Uh, whatever we want to name it. Uh, always love it when the hearts pop pop up because that means you got a good name. Jumping something was it? Yeah. I'm not sure exactly Perfect. what's going to be jumping. I'll probably update it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can switch to JavaScript here. JavaScript. And start from scratch. Uh, so we want to make the character to start? Yeah. Now, I, if I'm not familiar with the uh, JavaScript syntax, we can use a toolbox on the left. This is very helpful. Uh, so I can go just like blocks and drag, uh, drag this block here. And something that you're going to notice here is, uh, is this little icon on the left. So I don't want to draw my image by typing letters. I'm just going to go in, in the editor. Pa -dam. OK, so you're going to make your own or choose something from the gallery yeah. here? Yeah, what do we, you know? It's going to be I mean, we can make day. it Fallen Chicken if we want. Uh, fallen Chicken. Do we have a chicken? Oh, we have oh a chicken I can leg. draw chickens. OK, check this out. <laughs> well, you All have right, chickens. Here we go. Chicken body, chicken head, yellow peck. 
little orange legs. Wow, yeah. I think this is your calling. Uh, That's actually yeah, quite it's good. <laughs> a wing, a little wing here with the chicken, finishing the the butt, the underbody. You know, the legs. We have to fix the legs, and then some, you know, some some head there, and maybe an eye. There we go. No, like that. Wow. That's, a ro that's a rooster, right? Not a yeah. chicken. Yeah. White chicken. <laughs> that's very impressive, Pally. All that's, right. Wow. Yeah, that's what it looks like in text. And okay. I can actually collapse it. We don't want to mm -hmm. you know, spend all my screen size there. All right, I've got a chicken. And it looks like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spice it up and use a, a background, probably. Mm -hmm. Maybe blue. I don't yeah. know. I wish Richard were here. He knows all the numbers. So I'm going to set oh. my background color. Now we do use, we have 16 colors, so it's a number between 0 and 15 here. I think it might be 7. Well, if I don't know, here's my trick. I'd go into the editor, and uh, I'm just going to hover over the color. It's going to tell me, you know, 7. OK, yeah, okay. you're right. Uh, we don't see that because it's a tooltip. And it's only showing okay. the window, but oh yeah, there was something there. There was something there, so I know it's seven. Okay. And uh, now I've got a background. There we go. Oh. Okay. We got green. Perfect. Green. Okay. Uh, let's let's make that. Uh, what what's next? We're doing flappy chicken, right? Yeah. Jumpy so we want chicken. to fall. Uh, first, maybe let's set the X position so it's on the left side of the screen. Okay. So let's uh, give it like twenty. So it's called my sprite. Yeah. Oops. So question, can you mirror or flip your sprite image? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, it is it is a bit of work because your image is immutable, so you can't modify your image. So if you want to flip it, let's say I would have to do get the image. So I'm going to do image and then I'm going to clone it so that I can modify it. And then I'm going to flip it on the X side. And now uh, I could set it back to the to the chicken. Yeah. And Worth noting, uh, this is something where oh, oh flipped is uh, flipped is a statement, not a. It doesn't return. Do that. And the reason, you know, the reason these images are immutable is because when we compile to hardware, we have to place the image in a cer certain place in memory. Uh, so we're very tight in terms of how many bytes we can put there. Um, so there's a bit of like a uh, deeper reason why we're doing this way. Okay, I'm going to come on yeah. this. Worth noting, we have plans to change that up in the future a little bit, like make it easier to flip it in the image editor. It just hasn't occurred quite yet. All right, let's get some physics done. So it's on the left, and now we're going to make it fall by using an acceleration. AY. So AY is the acceleration. So if you know uh, physics or you've taken like a class around that, you know you have position, uh, velocity, which is how fast you go, and uh, acceleration, which is how fast your velocity changes. This one is in pixels per second per second. Uh, so you're chain like after one second, you'll be going about 200 uh, pixels a second. And yeah, it's falling off. That's pretty good. Uh, we're going to make a jump. And for that, I'm going to go into controller. Yeah. And you can All see here we've got here. we've got Monaco. So we've got the, the VS Code code editor mm -hmm. in make code. Uh, event, yeah. Yeah. To so help you. If you run out of space, you can also collapse the simulator. Perfect. And, uh, and the other there. question that came up was, is there an easy way to resize images in code? There is no yes. easy way to resize pixel art in general. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, um, it's pretty hard. I have an extension that tries to do it, but it's pretty slow on hardware because it's an expensive operation. Uh, but I would recommend just it. using a like a software on the side. Um, yeah, no, there's actually no easy way to do it. You have to redraw it. Uh, it's something we might look at, but in general, because these are small images and every pixel counts, uh, it's mm -hmm. not something easy. All right, so the chicken, uh, the chicken bounce. Ooh, not VX, VY. Yeah. Joey, you're supposed to watch what a. I was watching the chicken. 
the nonsense I'm writing. Okay, so we're setting negative 100 uh, speed. So when you uh, press A, it'll make it so you immediately have a velocity upwards, and then after about uh, one second, you'll or half a second in this case, does that work? Yeah, uh, you'll be hitting the top of your jump and falling back down. All right, let's get those. Uh, let's get those. We're doing flappy bird. Right? Let's get those pipes out. Yeah. Uh, so if we go game on updates, we'll get our on update event that will happen. Uh, on update interval is an on update that happens over an interval. So in this case, we probably want to give it 500 milliseconds or 1,000. Uh, yeah. Zero or we could just let this happen fast. and be a little bit fun. Uh, perfect. So create projectile from the side. Uh, and we were talking, I think we're going to do this one a little bit different than the falling duck example that we have. Uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to play a trick here. Make a huge sprite. We make a huge sprite here. So this is the width. So the width is going to be 15. That's fine. But this is going to be 200 high. Yeah. So boom. See, I'm zoomed out here. So I'm yeah. going to zoom in onto the top of my. I'll maybe zoom out a bit. Uh, so it's worth noting here, the screen's only 120 pixels tall, so this is way larger than the screen is actually. And I'm going to draw something like this, and I'm going to do square here. Like that, half of it, yeah. paint it. Sounds right. And do the same here downstairs. Mm -hmm. Whoops. There's an undo. Woo, undo. And recover. Oh, I'm still with the undo tool. Oh, the paint tool. Hey, Joey, uh, while Kelly's doing that, um, there was a question about the JavaScript and mm -hmm. um, why you don't have to add semicolons at the end of the line. And is this pure JavaScript as opposed to, you know, on top of a custom library? Perfect. Uh, both good questions. So JavaScript uh, doesn't actually require semicolons. I personally like prefer to have them, but it's not a requirement. Uh, it's different from Java, which people often get those two mixed up, uh, but Java requires semicolons. JavaScript just kind of works with anything you throw at it. Uh, and it, if anybody's asking that question about what it is, is uh, like, is it actually just JavaScript? Not quite. We actually run a variation of TypeScript. So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, right? So it's JavaScript plus, and then we just trim that down a little bit to what we can support on hardware. Uh, and if you're curious about that, I believe the uh, link to go to would be makecode.com slash language has a good description of like what we actually do. Uh, I'll just go to that in the background a little bit. Make sure that's right. Yeah, there we go. I'll post that in the Q&A. Oh. I don't see where that's going to be. I just did, Joey. Don't worry okay, about it. Okay, perfect. Um, so we got that, and we got your projectile X. Doesn't seem uh, happy. You, you so, want to put it at 160, right? Oh, that's X. No, I was talking about Y. That's why nothing worked. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so an interesting thing here is that having the gap in there, it might seem like that wouldn't work because we're going to have an overlap. Uh, we actually check overlaps on like a pixel perfect basis. So since there's no actual pixels in there, it's just clear pixels uh, in between the two parts of the pipe, you can go through it just fine. It's no problem. I think I made the gap a bit too big. Yeah, maybe. That's easy to change though. Yeah, it's I'll, nice I'll and to... easy. Nice, easy game yeah, for the little chicken. The green is, is the green is not going so well. So I'm going to go more for uh, blue. For uh, bluish. Like blue. So nine. Number nine. All right. The green is to ah. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, let's let's keep it like that. And now we're going to walk into uh, work to our overlaps. Perfect. So I'm going to collapse all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in Arcade, uh, the images can get very large. So if you're writing code, you probably want to collapse stuff very aggressively, like whenever you're done with it. I'll put oh, it there. 
that also happened in the current version. All right, so we're going to do an overlap between the player and the projectile. Okay, let's do a new line here, and it takes this function, and this is just like in blocks. I'm going to zoom out a bit. Yeah, we might need to. Uh, right, so, so Sprite is the player, and other Sprite is the toolbar. And here, uh, Flappy Bird is pretty pretty ruthless yeah. game. And then as far as point, what I'm going to do is, this is a quick trick, you just, just add point all the time. Mm -hmm. In every game tick, just add a point for the player. Nice. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we need to... Uh, but also we should be able to uh, make it well, exactly how many uh, things you pass pretty easily here if you want to. I we can use the on bit of map it. here um, and check that I'm outside the screen. So if I if I hit the and actually I should use the top and the bottom. Yeah. If I touch any of the sides, whack, game mm -hmm. over. All right, uh, top like and bottom are based off of the image. So you have X and Y, which is center, the center of the image, and then top, bottom, left, and right are all based off of that. All right, I think I need to go and give a sprite kind to my sprite here. So um, this is going to be the player. Yeah. Hey, Joey, someone had a question about your Corgio extension. Um, yes. And they wanted to know if they can get the source. Yeah, so you can get the source code of most anything. I'll go pull it up real quick. Well, actually, uh, if you're in code, if you oh, yeah. an explorer, you under the simulator, scroll down, and you can see that the whole source is here. So yeah. we have, uh, if you're curious about how the games are working, you can actually go and and click on any of the files and see how most of our stack is built. So this is all loaded. Otherwise, we are also open source on GitHub. Um, mm -hmm. And you can go and check this out. Uh, did um, I do make an announcement? OK, I'll just post in the chat. Uh, so this is where the source code for Corgio is if you don't want to load up in the editor and see it. Uh, I posted it in our chat, so I'm sure it'll make its way over there. We got a horrible bug somewhere. <laughs> Um, what's happening? It might be that we call game over at the wrong at the wrong time. I think my game over is um, hmm. something going looking on. I was for the core gear, so I, uh, When did this start happening? When I when you added the when I added the yeah. It uh, might can be you go that back to the overall? hardware. Still in hardware mode. All right. Well, something's going on here. Definitely yeah. not happy to do a game over. Is it because of my sprite kind here? Sprite kind player, sprite kind projectile. That looks fine. Uh, sprite, other sprite, game over. That should be fine. Yeah, so sometimes, uh, sometimes you can just reload the browser. Uh, I think here it might have been that we were doing hardware on the previous demo and we kept some state. And I think this should, uh, so yeah, this is solving the issue. Hey, Pally, um, folks want to see the whole coding window. So do you mind collapsing the simulator? Yeah. For a little bit, that. yeah. Sure. Um, so that's our, that's our code right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you can take this game to other places. So first thing you can do is click share here on the top uh, and then as usual when you share go ahead and you know so there's a short there's actually a keyboard shortcut which makes it easier to start recording so R is our keyboard shortcut and then record a cool GIF and we'll uh, associate that into all the social metadata when you share your mm -hmm. your link and again you got your Link you can share with someone, scan the code with your with your phone, or share it to our forums. But since we're in the more advanced session, we're going to talk about getting this program to GitHub and all the way maybe to itch if you want. Yeah. Do we want to switch to beta to show the cool stuff and 
maybe get the yeah. full page. Yeah. All right. So we've been working a lot on the on on the Git integration, and what I'm going to do is switch to our beta. This is the latest and greatest version of our editor. Uh, maybe and, a bit uh, buggy, which is why it's not. Yeah, like, maybe a bit buggy. Out. Uh, it's, you need to have a beta mentality. Get them there. Uh, okay, so what we have here is our uh, is our Git integration. So what we're telling, so what this does is allows you to export your game and store it in GitHub, just like the pros do. Mm -hmm. But everything's happening from make code. So you can do commits, push, branches, pull requests, all this good stuff. Mm -hmm. See and the difference can, between the code, uh, the even blocks, which is good. Uh, and limited on due to any commit you've done. Uh, also, we'll pre-compile your code. We'll just generate the JavaScript for you so that you've got like a full screen game. So what you see here is that we've got the check mark here. And I'm going to go and create a release. And the reason I do that is to tell Miko to compile my game, upload it to uh, GitHub so that I have a super fast loading page for my game. Mm -hmm. The thing you're seeing down here is uh, this this tool, uh, loader is our GitHub pages. So in GitHub, if you have a repo, you can have a, a, a little website, which is called a GitHub page. And it takes a few minutes to compile it. So we'll come back to that. Just a quick note, when you're using make code in GitHub, you've got your entire flow of you of doing uh, GitHub operations. So make a change, review your changes with, from within make code and commit or push or if you want to there's also revert this is also a full history here so it's a pretty flushed out experience mm -hmm. uh, and then now that i've given it a little bit of time it should be ready to run my game so Perfect. we're now in the generated website this is uh now running and you can see i'm not under arcade anymore mm -hmm. i'm on my domain which is uh, under my account in github and also you've got, you've got a manual page. You've got a link to the repo we just generated. You can see mm -hmm. it's in GitHub here. Uh, and for those who have hardware, uh, you've got a link to the pre-compiled UF2 file. So if I click on this, it's still building. So yeah, it's, it's not ready yet. Um, that one runs at the GitHub action on your repo and it's going to generate that pre-compiled version. Mm -hmm. So that's one way to, um, to share your program and we have a guide on how to take that and make it uh, and submit it to HIO if you're interested by that. Yeah, and that's really useful if you're making your own website, for example, if you want to make a portfolio of all your games uh, because it will load really fast. Like when we make a share link, we'll have to uh, take some time to build it on your side. But with that one, it's all pre-built. We just send the file and you run it. Uh, I have my own little website where I have like 10 things that load at once and it takes like a few seconds to get it started. Hey, um, Pelly, people are asking if you can post the share link to this game into the yeah. chat so we can so they can take a look at this code that you wrote. All right, let, let me record it. All right, I'm recording my best run so far. My high score. All right. And publish this. So I can post two things in here. First of all, I can post the share link into the chat. But also, if you want to take a look, I can also post the GitHub repo that I just created. My famous jumping something. Mm -hmm. So both of them, if you're if you're getting serious about writing a game, you're spending hundreds of hours on it. You really want to go for GitHub. You know, this is this guarantees that your code can be transferred across all machines. You got a nice history. Uh, you got all the power of GitHub uh, mm -hmm. from within from within make code. For example, I can look at all the commits I've done and I can go back in history if I want to. So this is as 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 you get serious uh, doing your games, you're going to want to use this. It also supports blocks. So if you're a block coder, you can also use GitHub. It's not just for text coding. Uh, there's a question about um, the compiler. So what compiler are you using? Yeah, there's some uh, internal stuff there, <laughs> right? So, uh, <laughs> so we uh, we use a uh, Google Blockly, uh, which is a library to create blocks. We then compile that, and that's our own compiler to TypeScript, mm -hmm. uh, which we call Static TypeScript. And then we take Static TypeScript, which is uh, which uses the TypeScript compiler, and we compile down that to a what's called an intern representation, and then we compile down that to JavaScript or 
ARM uh, firm assembly code. If you go into the build section, yeah. you'll see here there's a binary JS. So that is the JavaScript that actually runs in your browser. It's not super friendly to read, uh, but this is how the sauce is made. And uh, yeah, it looks more like assembly code than, than JavaScript code, but that's what's running in your browser. Uh, you're seeing what you're seeing here is kind of the, the human friendly version of that. Yeah. Um, and the so reason we do that like hard to read side is so that it matches up with the hardware so that you have the same behavior on both and you don't have like more features on, simu on the simulator than you would on the yeah, hardware. When we mention hardware, this means you can go and you can go and click on the download link. You now I'm going to go and do that again. The download link here, I can go and click on that, select the hardware I have. I'm going to do the Pi Gamer. Uh, it's going to go and download my game. And you'll see that there's going to be a pop up window with a file. And then what I need to do is take that file into my hardware and then it's flash forever. And then you can take it home. So I'm going to. I'm going to save the link. To uh, my drive here. And switch to the hardware. It's flashing. And now you can see that. And the only problem here, uh, Joe, is that for video purposes, we're going to we're going to set the brightness. Yeah. When you're recording uh, bright devices, it's like you're putting, pointing your camera at the sun uh, with how bright these are. We're going to go a very, off. very low brightness. Download that again. And you can see here my GitHub is telling me, oh, you've made changes. Uh, you need to upload that. So don't forget to push your changes. Mm -hmm. so uh, another good feature on beta that is a little bit less fantastic on the live site right now is the web USB experience. Uh, so that one actually lets you just connect the device and immediately really download bad. instead of actually making the file in between. There we go. So I Joey, there was a question for you. Um, is it, can you randomize the space for the chicken to pass through the pipes to make it more difficult? Can we randomize the space? Oh, like how? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think we do that in Falling Duck, actually, right? You you totally want to not do the the way I did, which is one one image, but you want to use two images. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at, you know, if we go and do the block version of this game, which is a uh, Fallen Duck here, uh, you'll see that it has randomized uh, positions for well, maybe the duck. we can do the uh, night variant too. Oh no, we don't. Because it's the beta and something bad happened. That was weird. OK. Hold, hold on. Let me go back to the release version. And mm -hmm. uh, if we open the Fallen Duck here with all the blocks this time, there we go. It has. It, it's a bit more fleshed out as an example. It uses the effects and so forth. You can see that the space is slightly different, I think. Yeah, um, I don't think this one makes the space too much different, but you could always make it bigger. Yeah. Uh, you could also just like generate the sprite at runtime if you wanted to, the big one, but that uh, if If is you're interested to time. learn about coding games and so forth, we've got examples. Yeah. We've got we the advanced things? live stream where uh, the team is going deep into tons of different small aspects of games. Uh, so we have a lot of material that you can learn on your own. We've got a bunch of tutorials on the top for you to go through. Uh, so hopefully that uh, that helps yeah. you. So Maybe with one minute left, um, if we could go back to the slide deck. Um, yeah, so um, there's tons of hardware and uh, you can even make your own arcade cabinets. Um, if you were in the previous session, uh, Pelly's talked a little bit about how to do that. Uh, but wanted to leave you with this link. Um, we are doing daily and weekly live streams um, where we go through arcade, Minecraft, and other uh, Make Code editors uh, where we do step-by-step -step tutorials. Uh, really focused on beginner level. There is a more advanced arcade uh, stream that, that Joey's part of. Mm -hmm. um, so please tune in to uh, our Mixer channel. Yeah. Oh, so laser <laughs> you. <laughs> there, <laughs> there, was, there was request, Pelly, for you to do the Steve head again, too. Oh, so. Steve head. Yeah, Steve is back. There we go. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, the survey, I guess. 
Yes, and the survey. Yes, please fill out the survey uh, for this session. Uh, give us any feedback for any future um, sessions. And I just want to thank you all for spending this time with us. I hope it was uh, valuable. And uh, like I said, please join us on Mixer for, um, for our future streams. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.